almost all goals or a huge proportion of goals come from central areas and inside 12 yards. So if we look at the two player shot maps again, you notice um, the gold zone or the danger zone, which is highlighted here, which is essentially um, anything central within the width of the six yard box inside the box. And Raheem Sterling is a completely different player to William when you look at the shot locations. And uh, although they may have different skill sets to an extent, i.e. one of them might be a little bit better at this or better at that, the fact of the matter is that Raheem Sterling has the ability to get shots off from inside this zone, and Willian generally doesn't. And that's what gives Raheem Sterling his goal-scoring threat. Some great stuff there from Ollie. So once we know that information, and once we get a picture of that's how goals are scored, how do we then go back with our teams and work on that there? So there's a couple of ways we can do this, and, and there's a couple of things that I want to challenge. You can obviously take your number nine or your centre forward and go out and do isolated work uh, in front of goal in that area and get a bag of balls and hit shots. And There is a place for that, uh, of course, absolutely. There is technique involved in this here. Uh, you can also then play a 5v5 game and get two number nines in front of, of either goal and get them the repetition to do that there. But... I think the drawback with both of these exercises is that if you rely only on them, the limitations are that the center forward is already in that zone. So the challenge in the game is how to get them into the zone whenever they're not there and they're supposed to be. And that can be very, very difficult. So this was an interview from Gary Lineker, who's one of the greatest goal scorers of all time now, he does a lot of work on TV. And I thought this is absolutely a brilliant assessment of that right place, right time mentality. My anticipation, if you like, I think people often say about a player that scores goals, he's in the right, he's in the right place at the right time. Um, that's true, but the, the answer to that is, is to be in the right place all the time. Um, and if you're there, eventually, and it, the thing about it is. I'll try and explain a little how to score goals now, <laughs> but uh, it's all about making runs in the, and movement in the box, and obviously the pace of that, the pace that I helps. Um, the thing I always do is I make a run, and I'll decide. I'll just take a chance to go for a space. I'll make sure I get there in front of the defender, and then if the ball comes to me, well, that's great. So if I make 15, 20 of those runs in a game and the ball comes to me once and I'm all on my own two yards out from goal, everybody will say, well, he's in the right place at the right time. But the answer is to be in that place all the time. Then eventually when the ball does come to the right place, you're there. Being at the right place at the right time all the time. I just think that's a brilliant interview, brilliant little insight from a, from a great centre forward. So the challenge is to get that forward into those areas at all times and I think this is a really underestimated or undervalued part of the game so when we look at clips today and we see goals that are scored in these zones it looks like they're tappings and it looks like there's not a lot to it but do we overvalue the one in a thousand shot that was struck from long range and flies into the top corner and undervalue the significance or the work rate or the mentality that it takes for this forward to get into these areas all the time, again and again. So, I'm going to use a quick example here of Sam Kerr at Chelsea. This is Sam's shot map, and you can see here there's a lot going on in that central area that Ollie was talking about. So, if we look at the highlights and we see your goals, it looks as if she just hangs out and she's a goal poacher and she stays in those areas. But when you watch the game and when you look at the different angles that we can get, we can see that there's a little bit more to it than that. So a couple examples here. Chelsea are in blue, of course. Win the ball here against West Ham. Sam's on the far side of the picture. You can see her here putting her hand up. So she's outside the box. She's looking at getting across that defender on the weak side, who's well aware that she's there. You can see that movement and the aggression of her movement and the speed of her movement to take that area. Similar position, she's not on the screen at all. She's back there, she's got to get in that zone fairly quickly. And again, 
that area that Ollie talked about. She attacks that area. Misses this time with, with the header. Same game. That's her there. Again, it's in transition. She makes two movements here that are small but quite significant. First is to look for the ball. And the second one is to keep going after she passes it off. And she's all alone. Taps it in. Looks easy, but she's done a fair bit of work there. This here, as soon as the ball's played into the space, you can see here she goes from an area of support. She's got a lot of ground to make up here. But again, the willingness to do this work and to win this race separates her. Again, she'll... But the movement is unbelievable. There's not a lot of forwards who can make up this ground and pull away like this. She does this again and again and again, and that's why she scores so many goals. This is against Manchester City as well. You see here, she's just at the top of the screen. So similar to the last clip, this was about two or three weeks after it. Again, she's got to get into that area, and her willingness and her aggression to get in that area gives her a simple goal. And then this one here looks, this is what we get on, on a highlight. You know, tapping, oh, that's an easy goal. I could have scored that myself. But, and this is why coaches need video and need access to looking at this and encouraging players to look at this. Because when you look at it from a different angle, that's her there on the far end or the closest to the screen. She's got to get into that zone. But she's also got to win a physical battle here with the fullback who knows she's there and is trying to block a run. So it's not just a speed race, it's also a physical battle once she gets in that zone. And the willingness and the ability to, to win those races time and time again, and if it's a physical battle to get in front of a fallback, then they've got to do that there. So it becomes a big psychological test as well for a centre forward. This is a clip from an interview that Chicharito did with Rio Ferdinand over the lockdown. Uh, just again... Gives you a little insight into the mentality that it takes for someone to you look at movement and just think it's a bit of luck or look at movement and think it's a bit of speed. But in, in reality, it's, a, it's certainly a psychological component for these players as well. And when we talk about movement of strikers, and for me as a defender, strikers that are moving all the time, especially when the ball is wide, is a nightmare to play against. Who taught you how to move like this? It's been how I'm going to beat that guy. I'm going to take advantage of you. Even, you can see me, even the workout sometimes, and I, and I still do it. Eh? But in, and, and I'm going to say this, and people are going to complain, but it's like, even when, when, the, when the, in the fitness uh, works, when they say, I'm going to go a little bit. When the fitness guy start three, two, when I hear one, I try to get, because I know I'm beating you. But I'm yeah. beating you. But the thing is, I'm going to maintain that, because if not, it doesn't matter if I not do it. So always in my mind, it's being like, try to be more clever, think ahead of, of someone. So in that moment, I was thinking like, let's do this movement of like, I'm coming to the ball and then I go back. And that mm. depends if the ball comes, great. If it doesn't come. So you're yeah. talking about like opposite movement. So coming to the ball and then running. Exactly. So, so for instance, yeah. when someone like Carrick or Skulls have the ball, oh. that's when you start to move like that. So when the physical and the speed is mixed, with that mentality and that awareness piece and that timing piece becomes very difficult to defend against. So you can see here the USC centre forward is drifting into a central position on the weak side of the centre back. Now the centre back knows that she's on the weak side. So she has got a decision to make or a problem. She can look at her or look at the ball. She probably can't look at both. And the centre forward is going to see the ball, see the space, and then just gets in front of her. And it's a brilliant finish, but that's the mixture of timing, the mixture of getting in the right areas, and then the mixture of that technique as well, because it's a great finish. Coaching this, I don't think it's a case of getting the right exercise. I think it's more of an idea of making sure there's enough, I suppose, different variations and diversity in your training so that the strikers can get enough of these different components. So. In this aspect here, yes, unopposed finishing. Like this is Tottenham. 
looks pretty basic. They're going off the whistle. Probably a bit of physical work going in there as well. It's not easy finishing a ball that's driven across the six-yard box. So there is an element of technique here as well that can help players. And enjoyable as well, finishing in front of goal. Always gets players going. But I think then when you move on to the sessions, I think it's less of having them in that area. If they're struggling to get in those areas, then it's a case of creating exercises like this one here, eight v eight in the middle, the way players limited to two touches, one touch, and then they're driving it across, and players have to get there. Then this one here is a different type of game, two v one if they break out on one side, and then a wide cross if they break out and win the ball on the other side. So different challenges for different players. Um, movement is is something that I find really interesting and again it's not just the volume I think the world of science was going to help us about 10 years ago in terms of oh now we can now measure what a player's putting in that was challenged whenever Lionel Messi can walk for 90 minutes and uh, produce what he produces and now everyone knows that it's not just about output of GPS it's about the quality of the movement and I thought this was a great clip of it's not just about getting players to do more, it's about the quality and it's sometimes difficult as a coach to get them to do less. So I thought this was a great clip from uh, from Phil Neville uh, talking about Ellen White before the World Cup last year. She would run a million miles in every single game, every single training session. And I used to always say to her, stop running, just just run between the width of the 18 yard box and you'll get your goals. And she used to look at me as if she, as if she hated me. And I was like, no, I want to run, I, I like to contribute and run around. Like, I'm quite enthusiastic, I, I want to be part of the team, I want to be involved quite a bit. Ellen, please stop looking at me like that. Trust me, you'll get the goals if you stay within the 18 yard box. I don't want to say he was right, but you know, <laughs> um, I worked really hard about being, basically my role is to be in front of the goal, to, to, to score goals and it was quite challenging to kind of change my game a little bit and adapt it but I felt like I was doing it a lot you know with club and also in a lot of England games moving into the World Cup and it started to kind of work. She came into the World Cup fresh and everything that she touched turned to goals. <laughs> I kind of realised, oh God, he probably was right. To make that unbelievable rise to where she was the best centre forward in the tournament, I think it's credit to her professionalism, her dedication and her desire to do well. Yeah, desire to do well and it's doing less. I think that's, that's really, really interesting. Um, before I go for the third one and final one, I want to do a quick little promo for the webinar series. We've done a, so many webinars in 2020. They're just coming to an end. We've got one more on Tuesday. All the interviews are always free. I put them up at a podcast. No problem with those at all. But the tactical webinars and the presentations, uh, we've decided to, to put pull back on those on the website and use it almost as, all right, so Modern Soccer Coach content will always be free on the website for a period of time. <laughs> and then... You know, we've got bills to pay as well and time to put into it. So if you've enjoyed the work and you would like to continue to, to help Modern Soccer Coach uh, throughout the next year and put these put these webinars together, then here is a way that you can support. We'll just take a quick break here. Thank you so much for watching the content at Modern Soccer Coach. If you would like to support what we're doing and help us provide more free coaching education with the webinars and the podcast and everything else, please take a look at this offer that we have from the webinars over the summer. Coaches can now download every single webinar tactical presentation that we did from the lockdown period over the summer. Just over $1 per webinar, you can personally download all 25 webinars that will be yours to keep. Each webinar is over one hour long and features a detailed presentation followed by live Q&A with the coaches in attendance. We cover topics such as youth and elite player development, sports science, tactical analysis, match preparation, goalkeeper pressing, and other key specific areas. We had coaches such as Jesse Marsh, Nolan Sheldon, Ivan Beregi, Adin Osman-Basic, Oliver Gage, Jonas Munkfall, Kat Smith, John Wall, and many more. 
modernsoccercoach.com slash shop. You can go there, get yours now, support Modern Soccer Coach, help us provide free content with our webinars and podcasts throughout the year. Thank you. Uh, this is another interesting area of where I think the centre forward position has changed. So the conversation around the types of finishes, I think, was pretty limited uh, for for a number of years. Definitely when I was growing up, it was more a case of on your left side, shoot with your left foot across goal. On your right side, shoot with your right across goal. And I think this conversation is going to change drastically over the next couple of years in terms of what types of shot a player has and, and what decision they're making at a certain moment in time. This is a little screenshot from the Stats Bomb course that I took online and I thought it was really interesting. It's just James York talking about a case study with Liverpool changing their shots and how they've moved closer to the goal and what that did. And it sounds so simple and so basic, but basically moving your shots away from a 1 in 40 chance into a 1 in 10 chance and what that does to goal scoring probability. So going back to that clip that I showed there that I was taught, right foot, right side, left side, left foot. I think we're, we're going to start to see as data starts to come in, some of these players at the top level are problem solving. Uh, with a little bit more creativity, and I think it's it's fascinating, really. This was a a tweet from Laurie Shaw last week showing that Son at Spurs is a clear pattern on the right side of the pitch. He shoots with his right foot inside the box and his left foot out of it. On the left side, it's the other way around. So, I think that's where we're going to start to see some changes with some players' shot selection and being a bit more creative in how they use. Because there is going to be more, as, as shot maps start to come in, there are going to be some defensive tendencies. So what are forwards using to solve these challenges? So here's starting to use covering defenders as shields for the goalkeeper. So this player here cuts inside. And you can see here the centre-back that comes over to cover is in the same line as the goalkeeper. And then leaves a big space that the goalkeeper can't see. On the far side, and now players have the have the technical ability that they can do this. So, this is right side, left foot, or it would be left side, right foot, cutting inside. So just a little bit more freedom for the players. And against the things that we would have said five years ago, ten years ago, as solutions have now changed. Perhaps where this opportunity here, we would say, well, this is one v one opportunity. Take the player on, or play a two v two. But in this case, when she takes a touch inside, again, you have that screener in front of the goalkeeper that blocks the goalkeeper's view. And she's able to curl this here into the far corner. And this skill, I think we're seeing more and more at the top level uh, because, again, it's, it's right foot, left side. But if the player is right footed, is that not a better solution than shooting it with your left foot? This one's a little bit different because she comes on to the ball. So it's the right forward and it looks again that it's going to be a 1v1 opportunity. But this time she doesn't even take a touch. She just uses this defender to guide the ball around. Again, it's a, it's a fantastic finish. But players are more comfortable with that skill set today. And it causes the defender a lot more problems because they don't want to jump into the tackle, of course. This one here is inside the box, Bethany Balser. And again, you'd probably say left foot, left side, but she comes across the ball and you know, is right footed, maybe is more used to this technique, but, and in my opinion, this is a way better finish than it would have been on the left foot. This gives her a way better chance because she can bend the ball around I think this is an unbelievable finish. So, as opposed to dictating this as a coach, she did this in a shooting drill. You would say, I'll oh, use your left foot. But people are doing this in games, and it's really, really effective. This one is, is super, super 
speed the the speed of it stands out to me because the right there you say left foot and it doesn't even look as if she's hit it with a right foot because probably of the angle but in the replays you can see how skillful this is and how effective this technique is the first replay you can see that it's the left foot or sorry it's the right foot but this replay here i think is fantastic because you can see how she moves her body across the ball and then the finish, that's very, very hard to save for a goalkeeper because the ball curls. Would it curl on the left foot? Yeah, but it would curl from the goalkeeper away rather than away towards the goal. So how do you coach this here and how do you work on it? It can be a challenge. This picture, I'm sure there's there's not a lot of coaches here that are, that are still using the, the 20 players line up and bounce it off the coach and shoot and get your ball and go back to the to the back of the line.